Hey everybody, Sam Crowley. Welcome to today's webinar. So let me just do a check of a couple of things here. Appreciate you being with me on a Friday. Wow, a lot of people here. Okay. Whoa, the pressure's on to perform, baby. The pressure's on to perform. Let me just see. Um, hey Todd, what's going on, buddy? Hey, can you guys hear me and can you see the screen? Should say, uh, should see my smiling mug there. With earn 100k with a podcast and then you can hear my voice yes yes can you type yes if you can actually see me or i mean see the slide okay cool everybody all right all right all right all right all right we're just about ready to get started here um just got my trusty water cool cool well hey guys um i'm recording this as well so i'll try to get the replay out uh, if you got to, I'd recommend sticking around though, because um, there's no guarantee. And I'm not saying this for scarcity. I don't know if I'm going to get this recording out or not, because it's Friday. So I'm going to check out after this webinar, spend some time with the family. Boy, can you believe school here in Ohio starts Tuesday? I know some kids are already back in school. And I send my daughter to the University of Cincinnati next Wednesday. I've never had a kid go to college before. Crazy times, man. Crazy times. So, um, <laughs> all right, we're recording. We're ready to go. All right, guys. Um, it's Sam Crowley, Earn 100 Grand with a podcast. Let's get into it. Um, disclaimer, I don't like webinars. I just don't. I don't like attending webinars. I enjoy doing them, but the typical webinar, and you know, right? You get on there and the host talks about themselves, him or herself for the first 15 minutes about how they used to be poor and they grew up in a trailer park and now they live in Malibu and they've got seven Lamborghinis and you can do the same thing. I hate that. I absolutely hate that. I'm not going to do that to you. Um, today's webinar is just going to be meat and potatoes. If you like it, great. Uh, I am going to give you an offer to work with me at the end of the webinar. So I just want a full disclosure. I'm looking for a couple of coaching clients, but not before I give you tremendous value. So I just want to be 100% transparent as a glass of water. So I don't know, do you, do you not like those webinars either where they start out with the first 20 minutes is all about the host and how great they are and how they overcame all this adversity. And now, you know, they're worth $8 billion and here's my plane. So I'm just, it's just not my style, man. It's not how I roll. So let's dive into this. Um, podcasting. I assume you're here because you want to learn how to podcast or at least see the power of it, right? Um, my podcasting studio is a Kroger parking lot in my Kia Forte, and it's funny, that story, if you listen to the Everyday Saturday podcast, I bought that last year just because I had a pretty good day um, in the office, and I went out and I Googled, what is the cheapest car you can buy? And up came a Kia, of all things. So I'm like, oh, never driven one. Seemed like a pretty nice ride. Um, we have three cars, which is completely insane. You got a family of six. It's like, hey, dad, I need a car. Why? I got to get to my job. I got to get to school. I'm like, well, I need one, and I need one. It's like, I don't, know what, I don't know what made me broke faster, buying braces or buying cars. But either way, I use my car as my recording studio. And that's a Sure MV88. MV88. Let me get into the uh, let me just, uh, insert text box. Let me just do this for you. Hold on one second, guys. I know you can't see that. But I'm about to blow it up. Blow it up. Uh, font. All right, cool. Let me just. Okay, Sure MB88. All right, that Sure MB88 plugs into my iPhone and it's really good recording. I got it at the Apple Store. Uh, I got it at the Apple Store for 150 bucks and it's really been a game changer in my podcast because what I always try to do, if, I don't know how many of you have seen me speak on stage. I'm, I usually am asked to speak at events about the topic of monetizing your message through this vehicle right here I'm going to teach you about today, podcasting. So people bring me in to speak about podcasting, and I immediately demystify all this stuff that you need a, this crazy recording studio, and you need this expensive microphone, and you need all these different things. You know what you need, and here's something you might want to write down. You need a powerful message. That's it. You need a powerful message. And don't, you know, poo-poo that by fancy word of mine, poo-poo. Don't, don't, you know, discard that and say, well, I don't really have a fancy message. I don't have an everyday Saturday message or I don't have Tony Robbins or Oprah's message. You do. You absolutely do. You know what's funny? 
Because what I have found, people want to learn more from everyday individuals than they want to learn from gurus. I don't know if you feel that way, but I resonate more when I listen to podcasts. I listen to everyday, ordinary people who've done extraordinary things because I can see myself achieving what they've achieved. I can't relate to somebody who's worth $400 million. I just can't. I mean, I, I can't even relate to that. And so I can relate to somebody who's got the same challenges that I have. However, they've been able to live a life of fulfillment and have a purpose to their life. And they've made a lot of money doing it by doing what they really love to do. So that's really the secret sauce of your message is, can you make your listener the hero of the story? So you really latch onto that thought because the least important person with a podcast is the speaker. Just like on stage, if you're talking about, hey, I wanna be a professional speaker, well, you gotta understand real quick, the least important person in the room is the speaker. The most important person is the audience. So my recording studio is in my car and I put that little mic onto my iPhone. It's really good sound. And I'm not saying you gotta record in your car, I'm just saying I do this almost as a joke. Every morning I, I, you know, I take my daughters to school if it's during the school year or if in the summertime, I grab a large coffee at Dunkin' Donuts, I drive to the Kroger parking lot, um, I just think about a topic I wanna to talk about. My show's only 10 minutes long. Let me just dive into iTunes. We'll go in and out of some different windows here, but let me just search. Uh, I'm gonna show you how iTunes works as well. So you guys, if you don't have a really good concept of it, don't worry about it, we'll dive into that. But every one of these shows right here, they're 10 minutes, 12 minutes, nine minutes, 15 minutes, but I just pick a topic I wanna to talk about. I use the notes section of my iPhone when I'm listening to a good sermon of a pastor or if I hear something on a podcast, just a thought, just one thought that will help me talk about something for 10 minutes, then I do it. How long should a podcast be? Well. We'll dive into the, you know, how these things work, but basically the average listener listens to a podcast between 18 to 22 minutes, on average, 18 to 22 minutes. So does that mean your show should be 18 to 22 minutes? No, nah, no, nah, not really. It can, be, it can be an hour and 20 minutes if you want to, or it can be five minutes, it doesn't matter. But just understand around that 20 minute mark, most people are gonna pause, they're gonna check out for a while because they got to maybe they, you were, they were driving in the car, the average American commutes, 95% of Americans commute is 30 minutes or less in the car. And when you see, that's how a lot of people listen to podcasts. So if you keep your show around that 20 minute mark, then most likely they're gonna you give them a better shot of consuming the entire podcast in one shot versus having to come back and listen to it, okay? Um, so I record in my car because the acoustics are great. It's super simple. It's really silly um, <laughs> because I love being, you know, having a podcast and having people think that, you know, oh my God, if he's, he's been doing this since 2005. He must, you know, have this really elaborate studio. No, because I train podcasters and, I, and, and, and if, I, if I do it in my car, imagine what they think. Remember, I wanna make them, I wanna make you the hero of the story. So if you see me getting 15 million downloads of a podcast and I'm doing it in the car, in a grocery store parking lot, then you can see yourself as the hero of the story. Does that make sense? So in your own marketing, make sure that you're making your prospect, your client, the hero of the story. Because nobody wants to hear how great I am. They wanna know how great things can be for them, okay? So how did, how did this, the idea for this webinar, I just got this a couple of weeks ago. That's my buddy, Luke Medeus. I don't know if Luke's on the webinar or not, but Luke came to Cincinnati. Uh, he's a private coaching client of mine and he's absolutely crushing it, teaching people how to wholesale real estate. So Luke and I, um, we went out, this is, a, this is a picture of a restaurant we're at. And that was our, his first night in town. He's in here for two nights. So he came in the first night, we went to dinner, uh, mastermind a lot, and then he was in my office all day the next day. And then we went out again for a couple of drinks. And I was teaching him my system about getting people from your podcast, in this case, to just an online calendar, you know, and, you know, helping people through coaching and consulting. If, can I just see, I'm curious, type yes if you are a coach or a consultant or somebody who shares your expertise with other people. Okay, just type yes into the so I can see how many people we have. Oh, we have a lot, okay. Not yet, okay. That's fine. Or, or if you have an interest in it, because this system that I'm gonna share with you is a 
amazing for people who share their intellectual property. Just share your expertise with, with anybody, you know, coaching, consulting, speaking, anything like that. This system I'm going to share with you is absolutely amazing. Okay. All right, cool. So you have a lot of people interested or currently doing it. All right, cool. Well, Luke came in town and we were hanging out that second night before he, he went back the next day. And I said, hey, man, let's just, let, let's just, everybody that got on your calendar, let's just text them back. So Luke was texting and he had a call set up for uh, 6.30 that night. And so he jumped on the call and I'll just make it a long story short. And this really did happen. Luke can verify it uh, as well. And I think he did on a podcast. But he sold a $2,500 coaching package that didn't even exist that he didn't have prior to that call in eight minutes, eight minutes on and off the phone in eight minutes from somebody who was listening to his podcast. So I started thinking, wow, so eight minutes, let's just say the call went 10 minutes. There's six 10 minute increments in an hour and you sold $2,500 in the first. So six times 25, let me see my math here. That would be five grand in 20 minutes times three would be 15 grand an hour. Is that right? That's crazy. So I'm thinking, hey, congrats, man. You're making, you're making 15 grand an hour uh, talking to people on the phone. That's awesome. And I think his mind was blown because he's seen me do it and he's heard me do it, but he never did it himself. So what did I do? I made Luke the hero of the story. All he had to do was get on the phone from somebody who's, see, here's, here's the thing about podcasters, okay? People who consume podcasts are very loyal, more so than people who read a blog or YouTube or anything like that. And we'll get into that in just a minute. So Anyway, when Luke sold that $2,500 in eight minutes on the phone, and he's not, this is not a guy who sells on the telephone, all right? He doesn't even have a coaching package prior to that phone call. You know, he had no idea that this whole six-figure revenue arm was now going to be built as a result of us, you know, drinking a Merlot on a patio one night on a Thursday night summer here in Cincinnati. So I just want you to think about this, okay? What would your podcast be about or what is your really clear, concise message? And if you don't have that answer right now, I'm not, you don't have to have it right this second. Just think about it, okay? Because people are yearning for everyday, ordinary individuals like you and I, okay? Not the guru on the mountaintop who won't even talk to you unless you pay him a hundred grand or a million dollars or, you know, you're, are you a member of my membership site or all that crazy nonsense, you know? Why would you want to make it difficult for people to do business with you? You know, would you agree that customers are good for business? So if customers are good for business, why make it so hard for people to do business with you? You know, just be cool. You know, people resonate with that stuff. Um, why you should pay attention. I've got, I've got the longest running motivational podcast on iTunes, over 16 million downloads in over 100 countries. Uh, I've personally trained 3,000 podcasters how to explode their message and really never work again. You know, because when you love what you do, I really believe that adage, you will never work again. Uh, I consistently earn over five grand a day from a 10 minute audio that I talked about recorded in a Kroger parking lot. And here's the funny thing. It all began in the middle of a bankruptcy, no money, no website and no friends. <laughs> when you lose your money, you lose your friends. I think now, there's only a few people that stuck around with me through those tough times and I'm very grateful they did. Uh, but I think when you got no money and you have no opportunity to really help anybody, you kind of lose most of the people in your life, sadly. But hey, I know it's supposed to be a motivational webinar, but I'm just, uh, I'm just sharing what happened back in the day. But the good news is I discovered this thing called podcasting and it's really um, changed my life for the good. You know, it's landed speaking gigs. If you want to be a speaker and get paid, people will do that as a result of having a show on iTunes. And it's not just I iTunes, even though we're going to dive into that, Spotify. Google Play, Stitcher Radio, all these different platforms, but the big 800 pound gorilla is really iTunes. That's why I focus on it a lot. So I've got a little bit of credibility in this space as somebody who was one of the early pioneers of podcasting. You know, there's over 700,000 podcasts on iTunes right now. When I first got started, it's probably less than 5,000, you know? And I'm going to show you why you can start today and make just an incredibly huge splash in this area, okay? But here's what I don't do, okay? I don't write a description for my podcast, which some people say, that's crazy, man. You're losing so much search engine juice. Yeah, maybe, maybe. But remember, I'm the everyday Saturday guy, all right? I don't put that many hours in in a day. I can put more hours in and spend more money, but 
that's a law of diminishing returns for me. I just really like what I do. I'm passionate about what I do. I enjoy life. So I don't write descriptions in my podcast. I don't create show notes with links to all these different platforms. Uh, I don't ever hardly post. I don't even know the last time I posted on social media that listened to my podcast. I don't hire a third party to, you know, transcribe my show or do all these crazy things with your podcast. And I'm, here's, here's why I'm sharing all this with you guys is so many people get into anything. This is this, this podcast as well. Um, because they, uh, you know, they get in and they want to spend all this money. Um, Cruz asked, why don't you post on social media? You know, I just don't, um, because I just, I just don't every now and again, I will, but here's why. Now I, I recommend you guys do that. I'm not saying don't, uh, not post on social media. I'm saying I don't do it because I'm always out to prove the power of doing the most minimal amount and receiving the most maximum benefit. Okay. So when you have a podcast, yes, post on social media. I'm saying I don't do it because I want to just get so silly with this entire process to show you how powerful this is in and of itself. If you just record audios, that's it. All right. I don't pay for traffic. Never have never paid one dime to promote my podcast anywhere. Uh, so the total amount paid for advertising in 15 years, $0. So if you have an Instagram account, yeah, absolutely. Tell people about your podcast, Facebook, absolutely. Tell them about it. Um, when I first got started, I did, I posted on MySpace. That'll give you an idea of how long I've been podcasting. I used to promote my podcast on MySpace and I think Tom was the only one that saw it. That's a, uh, MySpace joke for those of you old enough to remember. All right. What's a podcast? Uh, let's fire through this real quick. It's basically an online radio show that people voluntarily subscribe to voluntarily guys, meaning right here. Okay. You hit the subscribe button right here. Uh, there's no red arrows pointing to it. There's no opt in, opt in, get my free ebook or none of that stuff. It's just somebody hits the subscribe button right here. They subscribe. That's it. You don't know they've subscribed. Okay. You get, you get no name, you get no email, you get no information about the person who subscribed, but how do you end up getting that person as a client? How do you end up making money from people who listen to your podcast? Well, there's a lot of different ways to do it. And I'm going to talk about my system and method towards the end of this only because I want to show you exactly what a podcast is and the power of it. But just think about if you recorded a, you know, 15, 10 or 15 minute podcast. And at the very beginning, you, you allowed, you know, you get took five to 10 seconds to very casually explain what it is you do and how you help people. And if you do what I do, you send them to your online calendar. I'm always sending people to my online calendar. And if you listen to the show, it's very conversational. It goes, you know, it goes something like this. Hey everybody, Sam Crowley, welcome to the Everyday Saturday Podcast. So great to have you back inside Saturday Nation. Hey, if you're interested in chatting with me one-on-one, -on -one, I would love to help you monetize your message and allow you to create really the Saturday lifestyle. Just get on my calendar, launchwithsam.com. That's launchwithsam.com. I'll call you. It really will be me. I'll call you from my cell phone. And I'll give you at least three concrete steps you can use right now to, uh, to crush it, man, and to launch your movement. So go ahead, go to launchwithsam.com. And then I get right into the message. That's it. That was 10 seconds. And it's very casual, very conversational, no hard selling. And my whole goal is I want people to get on my calendar. That's it. Okay. So that, that's my call to action. And I'm going to talk about why you need a CTA. 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 Call to action. You got to have it. That's how you monetize this whole thing. Because you're going to get the downloads. It's absolutely happening. It, it would be, and this is, this is a true statement. It is impossible. It is an impossibility to launch a podcast and to not get a download without even trying. It is impossible because once your show goes live on iTunes, then it is global. People are downloading it. Well, how do they find your show? I'm going to show you that in just a second here. But it is an impossibility for you to launch a podcast and to not be discovered by people all around the world in over 100 countries and start receiving thousands of downloads. Guaranteed, guaranteed, guaranteed. Okay? So I, wrote, I, I give this kind of an analogy. Podcasting is to radio, really, what Netflix is to television. Okay? It's an on-demand, as-you-go Listen, audio format. I believe we're in the middle of an audio revolution. 
And you probably would believe that as well if you took a minute to think of how much audio you listen to, but whether it's podcasting or maybe it's still the radio that you listen to in your car, some way you are consuming audio because it's easy to do. You don't have to be looking at a screen. You don't have to be paying attention. You just kind of let the, let, you know, you put the earbuds in and you're consuming music, whatever it is, you know? Um, who should have a podcast? Men, women, anyone who can fog a mirror, okay? If you talk, you better, 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 better have a podcast, especially if you have an interest in coaching, consulting, or speaking, all right? Um, for every 900 blogs online, there's only one podcast. Even if you're female, that number's crazy. Look at that, 3,500 to one if you're female versus being a blogger, okay? There's only one one podcast for every 3,500 bloggers out there. So the reason this is, question, why is podcasting so powerful? Well, think about the last blog post you read. Do you remember who the author is? Eh, maybe, maybe you do, maybe you don't. But you don't easily forget the name of the person with the voice, okay? That's why it's so powerful. So when I launched my website way back in the day, this is what it looked like. Every day is Saturday.com. The photo of my, that's my daughter going to college, by the way, next week. She's 18, Madeline. That was her when she was three. That's how long I've been in this game, 15 years. It's like dinosaur years in the internet. But I had a website, which was the dumbest thing I, have, I could have ever done. Like I said, I was in the middle of a bankruptcy. I didn't have any money. So I had to give, I had to just, any, any cash I got, I threw at this guy to build me a website. It cost me $3,000 and it was the dumbest decision ever because there's no place to even enter a name and email anywhere there. You know what I mean? It's like myself and when you come on board as a coaching client inside of our Everyday Saturday team, Samantha Kaplan builds out your funnel for you. It's all done for you. Samantha holds you accountable. She reminds you about the benchmarks we needs to hit and all of that while you and I are working on your messaging. She's creating your funnel and she's creating your social media platform. And I look back and I think, wow, had I had Samantha or myself or a team behind me back then to tell me what not to do, I would have saved three grand, first of all, and I would have made a hundred times what I would have made a lot faster. And I just think those decisions are really important. I don't know if you've ever paid somebody to do a task for you online and it didn't work out. And if it's not, I'm not saying it, if it's your fault, it's your fault. Like if you didn't follow through, you didn't do what needed to be done, then it's your fault. But if you paid somebody to build a website, to build a funnel, to build this, or maybe they promised and it didn't happen, that sucks, man. And I've done that a lot. And I'm sure you have as well if you've been on the internet any, any amount of time. But I look back at this website and I said, that was a bad decision because what I should have built was a funnel with just a simple landing page with an ebook or an audio to give away and just start building a mailing list. And I never did that. I wish I would have. But anyway, that that's back then. Now, this is, you know, dreams come true. I've been fortunate enough to share the stage with the who's who of people that I really hold in high regard. Les Brown, and Janet Atwood, Tony Robbins, Robert Kiyosaki, Bob Proctor, Gary Vee, all these individuals. I've been able to share the stage with it one time or another in my life. And it's amazing because it all started with a podcast. Every opportunity that I've been given, I can trace back to having a podcast on iTunes. Every one of these speaking gigs was because I have a podcast. And all of this is going to happen for you as well. I don't know when. I mean, I have no idea if it's going to happen next month, next year, or five years from now. Does it really matter? I mean, if, if your goal is to share the stage with people like this, does it really matter how long it takes? To me, it never mattered because I knew that the time would pass anyway. Look, for me, 15 years passed, okay, since I launched this business and launched my podcast. The time's going to pass anyway. So if it's going to pass anyway, why not go for your dream? You know, why, why continue going to a job or why continue banging your head against the wall with some, you know, e-commerce site or trying to do this or doing that when you really you know what you love to do is to share your message. Does that make sense? Let me just hit a hard pause after 20 minutes or so. Is, is this making sense? Is this valuable? Is there something that you're like, ah, oh, you know, I don't really get this, Sam. I don't really get it. Right. Does this make sense to you guys what I'm talking about so far? Because if you like the first 20 minutes, you're going to love the next few minutes that we're going to talk about here. All right. I'm just trying to keep it real. Keeping it real. All right, cool. Making sense, making sense. Got it. Awesome. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, and by the way, guys, what I'm doing right now, you could do tomorrow. You could get yourself a Zoom account, put together some uh, slides on a keynote and share it with people. You know what I mean? Like you, 
Everybody on this webinar can host your own webinar tomorrow and just do it. Um, Sharon, can you explain funnels and landing pages and how it links to podcast? Absolutely, yeah. Um, great question. Let me just uh, go here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Everybody, everybody remain calm. I'm just gonna go here. Uh, marketing, marketing secrets.com. Okay, this is a funnel. Russell Brunson is the king of funnels. All right, the guy has spent millions of dollars researching it. He, he owns ClickFunnels, which we use for uh, building our, our clients. And by the way, if you, if you have to leave the webinar early and you would like us, you would like me to call you by the, and just talk to you about what your message should be or could be, I'm happy to do it. Just go to launchwithsam.com. Let me put that. I just want to do this for people that might have to leave early because I know you all, you're all busy. You have kids, you have family, you got everything going on. Launch with Sam. Dot com. It's my online calendar and you can book a time, a 30 minute time slot. You'll see a one minute video of me. That's my kitchen and pick a time that works for you and I'll call you. Okay. So for those of you who have to leave early, just go to launchwithsam.com, pick a time and I'll call you. It can be anytime next week and I'll jump on the phone and I'll give you 30 minutes of my best advice on how you can launch your movement right now. Okay. Um, to answer Sharon's question, this is what a funnel looks like. This is what I wish I would have had 15 years ago. You've got the headline, the Marketing Secrets Black Book, 99. This isn't mine, this is Russell's. But there's only one thing to do here, guys. There's one thing, and that's enter your email. That's it. You can't click, did he click, did it click, did it click all over the place, about us, contact us, my blog, my podcast, my videos, membership site. And you know most people go to sites like that, and they click, click, click. The next thing you know, they're on Amazon buying a new television. Have you ever done that? Have you ever gone to a website, started clicking around, and next thing you know, you're like on eBay and you're looking at a, you know, a, a MacBook? I mean, that's why websites are so terrible. You know, in 2019, should you have a website? Yeah, of course, just to reinforce who you are. You know, mom and dad can take a look, and your cousins, and your family reunion, you can show them how pretty it is. They will make you absolutely no money. This is what makes money. Sending people to a one page where there's only one thing to do, and that's enter your name and, e and email. So I give Russell a lot, of, a lot of credit. He went from zero to $100 million in sales in three years, just talking about funnels. And like I said, our team builds these all day, every day for our clients, but we never even get into this stuff until we get clear on what the messaging is. Messaging, okay? You've got to be clear on what your message is. Because if you don't have a clear message, you know, if you aren't clear on what you do and the result you provide, you, you, I mean, you might as well just be shouting in the dark, man. Nobody's going to be listening to you. Okay. Okay. Things you may not know about podcast consumers. Uh, most podcast consumers fall in this 25 to 34 range, beginning there most, and this 45 to 54. This is the coveted range. You've got 49% here and 16, that's 65% of podcast consumers fall in this coveted demographic of 25 to 54, okay? Now there's a ton, 18 to 24 and 55 to 64 as well, that's another 30%, okay? But look at that, look at where most podcast consumers fall into. So they're the perfect demographic for people that you wanna to market to. Income, podcast listeners are much more affluent than regular media consumers. Podcast listeners, 32% more likely to make 75 grand a year, US dollars, 37% more likely to make 100 grand, and 45% more likely to be making $250,000 a year. So what have we established so far? Perfect demographic, they got a lot of money. This is how guys like me and other people, men and women all around the world, this is how I earn five grand a day with a podcast because these people have money and they're well-educated too. You know, 45% more likely to have a college degree, 56% more likely to be undergrad, and almost 70% more likely to be postgraduates, okay? Podcast listeners are a great demographic. They got a lot of money and they're well-educated, okay? Anybody excited about that so far or is this kind of, yeah, you know what? Yeah, so what? They're the perfect demographic and age for me. So what? They got a boatload of money and eh, no big deal that they got all that education. I mean, this is the holy grail of marketing for anybody that's got a message. But again, you got to have that message, okay? That's important. Percentage of people that have ever listened to a podcast, 124 million last year. 
73 million just in the past month have listened. The market exists. I'm showing you these slides to let you know the market is list exists. Um, most often, right now in 2018, 76% of people are consuming a podcast on a mobile platform, right? Smartphone, tablet, portable device, things like that. And that kind of resonates. This is inside my Blueberry account here. Whoops. I got to get out of that. I just hit annotate and I'm about to blow up this thing. Okay. Oh, I bet if I hit annotate, I could. This is, uh, I've got about 6.4 million downloads of my show in the past few years. This isn't totals ever forever, but this is the last few years. And this is really cool. Um, it shows you again, this kind of mirrors what I was just talking about. Almost 5 million of my downloads are coming just from the iPhone and iPad. Okay about another half million are coming from Android and then the rest of it are desktops, but very few people listen to a podcast on a desktop because they're on the go when they're listening. Um, geography, geographically speaking. And again, when we launch a show for you and when we teach you how to podcast our team, we, you and I dive into this podcast hosting. I set everything up for you. You don't got to do any of this. I set everything up for you, your podcast, everything, your message, the artwork, all that stuff. It's all part of the coaching package that I offer people. And so this will show you where a lot of your downloads, my top 10 referrals, US, Canada, Australia, UK, and so on and so forth. And then just to show how far reaching, look at this guy. I don't even, I don't even know like Central African Republic, Cook Islands, the Congo. Uh, I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't even know how to pronounce it, you know, Les, Lesado. I mean, I don't even know where there's Madagascar. I've heard of Madagascar. But this is the power of the podcast. And when you look at where all of your downloads are coming from, it is absolutely mind-blowing that people all over the world are putting earbuds in their ear to listen to your message. Is that not exciting? I mean, does that fire you up? I'm telling you, man. It, it fires me up every time I see it. And so this is the power of podcasting. All right. And why most people are taking it on the go and it's a mobile platform they're listening on. 82% of the people listen while at home. Okay. Uh, in a car, truck, walking around, you know, if you listen to a podcast, this probably mirrors what you do. You know, the top five or six places at home, in a vehicle, walking around, you're at work, at the gym, riding public transportation. This is where people are consuming. <laughs> The content all right and so like I said the whole launch with Sam what I do is I send people to a calendar there's a lot of ways to make money with a podcast guys but I'll talk about that in a few slides from now all right let me just do a check here 30 minutes in everybody still with me all right are you excited are you is this information that you didn't know or it's reinforcing what you already knew is it blowing your mind is it excited motivating everybody's still with me 30 minutes in all right, 30 minutes in. All right, cool, 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 cool. All right, yes, sweet. All right, everybody's motivated and fired up, fired up, fired up. I just wanna share this with you. This has been the power of my story. What if I lost everything, what would I do? I'd do exactly what I'm teaching you guys, man. I teach how to create a podcast. Uh, that's our daughter, Susan, that was born five years ago tomorrow. Five years old, can you believe it? Can you believe she's gonna be five tomorrow? She was born at one pound. And that's what she looked like when she was born. I mean, she's about the size of your cell phone. And so, you know, all of that time we spent, I still was creating content, you know? I still was creating a podcast from the NICU outside of, I would go in the parking lot at Cincinnati Children's Hospital and I'd record podcasts. And then I would go back in and upload them, you know? And so it's like, it's, this is what I would do if I lost everything. I would, I would start a show and I would just start sharing my message because I was more preaching at this time. <laughs> Than I was anything else saying, hey man, this is, the, this is the power of working at home and making every day Saturday. That's when she first opened her eyes at 26 weeks. You would never see a child open your eyes unless they were actually 26 weeks out of, uh, you know, had been born and was because their eyes open inside the womb. That's my wife and I celebrating small wins and there she is. Uh, she'll be five years old tomorrow. And that's what a miracle looks like. You're looking at a full-blown miracle right there. And that's why I do what I do. So when I get asked this question a lot, what if I lost everything? I almost did. I almost did. But I would never quit creating content, especially audio content, because it's so easy to consume and it resonates with so many people. 
And I really want to encourage you to take this whole podcasting thing seriously. All right. And there's my family there. My wife, Angela, and that's our four daughters. All growing up. All right. So how do people find you on iTunes? Okay. Let's take a look how people find you. This is the search box up here. And I'll open up my iTunes browser in just a second. But every once you're inside of iTunes, you've basically left the internet. Okay. You're held captive to Apple. And Apple's going to show you what Apple wants to show you. And iTunes is going to show you that. So when you go into that search box, a lot of people find me by typing in keywords, you know. So people will type in the keyword motivation up there. And maybe that's how you found my show if you listen to my podcast. And usually the Everyday Saturday podcast, the one I do, is in the top four, five, six, seven. It doesn't matter to me. As long as it's in the top ten, I'm cool with that. And, and the reason it is, and I'll show you in just a second. Take a look at this, guys. This is iTunes. What's the title of my show? It's Motivation and Inspiration from Everyday is Saturday. So if I were to type in Inspiration, for example, <clears throat> look what comes up number two right there it's the number two podcast in all of itunes there's 700,000 podcasts of all 700 pod 700,000 which is a crazy big number my show is number two that's ridiculous think about that think about your show one of the things that I do with my coaching clients as I teach them how to title their show the right way. Because most people just put the title of their show as the title of their podcast, which is the absolute wrong thing to do. Or they'll think they this whole description in here, if you can see in here, that they, let me just see here. I'm gonna try to annotate. Boy, this could, this could get scary. Let me see. Oh my God, I'm drawing. I'm drawing. All right, this right here. People spend so much time on the description, it means absolutely nothing. Do you need a description? Yes, you do. You need a description, but it means absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of things, okay? So it's important to understand. Um, Cruz, my title is Over a Brew. How would you title it? I don't know right now. I gotta fo focus on this message I'm sharing right now. I'd be happy to help you. Look, if you, I'm happy to give you advice on it. If you wanna get on my calendar, just go ahead spend more time discussing your specific um your specific podcast happy to do it happy to do it so let's take a look at here guys okay so this this whole annotation thing this whole i mean this whole uh description not important when people hit this button here the subscribe button every time your show you upload a new episode, they get notified on their phone. You know this if you have an iPhone, you get ping, you got a, a new episode there, okay? And that's very powerful once they subscribe to your show. So understand that titling here, I've got motivation, I have inspiration, I have the name of my brand, and I have my name in, keep pe in case people are looking for me. Now, you can't spam iTunes. I mean, it's not like you can put all these spam words in the title. It's got to be kind of, you know, coy with it and be cool with it, you know? So it's very important to understand that. All right. Does that make sense how you title your show? iTunes is going to give you some, some major love for that. All right. So let's um, see here. Annotate off. Cool. Glad I learned a new trick here. Um, what else do I want to show you here? Go back to my slide. The what's hot section doesn't exist anymore. It used to. So that was cool when it did. Doesn't it look like Tim Ferriss is actually looking up? It's like, wow, I wish I could be Sam Crowley. Um, but that, that's since gone. In the last week, iTunes just revamped their entire platform last month. Okay. Uh, there's inspiration. I showed you that. Uh, motivation and inspiration, the subscribe button. That's how people find you. And look at the titles of my show, guys. Motivation. Motivation. Motivation, motivation. Look at the title. I just recorded one literally this morning. I don't know if it's on. I, I 20 minutes before, 20 minutes before I got on this webinar, I recorded a podcast in my car. But see these right here? Motivation, right there. Motivation is the title. Motivation right there. Moving down here, all the way down, you'll see motivation in a lot of the titles. Motivation, avoiding the fear tap. Why do I do that? So I can play in the keyword. It's important not only how you title the actual podcast, but each episode as well is very critical. And this is all kind of hacks on how to get found on iTunes, okay? 
because there are ways to get found. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not rocket science, but it's also, you gotta be a little more clever than the average bear on it because you can also get put in iTunes jail if you get a little too freaky with it. All right. This is why your podcast is going to catch fire. Look at this slide. Take a picture of this slide. I don't care what you got to do to make, take it from your iPhone. This slide is a game freaking changer. Okay. There's over 700,000 podcasts on iTunes. Only 18% have posted a new episode in the past three months. What? Guys, that is crazy. If you just stay in the game 90 days, you're going to make a splash in this thing. That's how my man Luke, go back to Luke here. If, Luke, if you're on the webinar, ping me, text me. If you're not, that's fine. I just I hate to keep talking about, I don't feel cool. To, I always talk about people when they're not here. I feel like I'm gossiping about them, but I'm actually uh, giving them major love here. So Luke's, Luke only has 38 episodes, guys, and he only did three. So you can't even count March. What did he do? He did five. He did about five or six in April. He only did four in May. That's it. Four podcasts in May. And then I'm like, dude, you got to start podcasting more. You're going to get a ton more downloads and people are going to start, you know, booking calls because he wants to sell coaching. That's what he wants to do. And he already does a million a year with his real estate business. He doesn't need any more money from his current, but he wants to coach. He wants to share his value. He wants to help people, you know? Um, so what he did, he started podcasting more. He still got probably less than 10,000 downloads last I checked, but he's selling five grand last week, just last week alone in coaching. It's, a, it's unbelievable. So why is he, why? Because only this stat right here, only 18% of the people have even posted a new episode in the past three months. If you just start today and you're consistent with it and you've got a clear, remember guys, clear message, clear result, clear message, clear result. People will resonate with that. And this is way better than blogging. All right. Blogging is a two to three year concept. I mean, that requires SEO and it's always changing. The good thing about iTunes, it never really changes relative to how do you get found? And how do you get exposure? And how do you get a ton of download, uh, downloads? Like I said, it's an impossibility for you to launch a podcast and not get downloads. It's impossible. And you spend zero dollars. Zero. Okay? So here's another thing. I showed, like, I was doing a couple, I spoke at a couple of events and I was sharing these, you know, negotiate's a really good keyword. For example, if you were to type negotiate in the search box, well, there you go. Take a look at this very first one. I'm showing you how iTunes can be just a dead, like an old Western movie with the tumbleweeds blowing down the street. Sometimes that could be iTunes and you could jump right in right now and take advantage of this with your message. Okay. Look at that first one right there for the keyword negotiate. Okay. This guy right here. Boom. See this right there? Negotiate. Next slide. Whoop. My man will tell Last episode, 2010, 2010, and they're number one for the keyword negotiate. If you had a show with that title in it, you'd automatically be number one. Look at this, sales training. That's a pretty good title, isn't it? Okay, let me get, uh, uh, stop doing that. Okay, um, sales training. Take a look at this guy right here. Sell more, talk less, this person right here. Right there, number two under sales training. All right, take a look at that. And then, boom, last episode, 2015. 2015, it's crazy. One more, I'll show these to you. I love showing these because people are like, dude, I can't even believe that's true. Las Vegas real estate. If you were a real estate broker or an agent in Las Vegas and you wanted to launch a podcast because you wanted to get credibility and, and update people on the Las Vegas market every week. You think Las Vegas real estate would be a good keyword to have and to be number one? Well, look at this guy, man. 2007. 2007 is the last time he uploaded an episode. He or she did. Well, Agent Bill. So I'm guessing Agent Bill is a, is a he. So it's super duper powerful if you just get going, if you can just commit it's like committing to anything, but all you got to do is talk five to 10 minutes. That's it. Talk five to 10 minutes a day or three times a week. And you've got this huge platform. You've got this huge 
audience that iTunes will gladly promote for free. Absolutely free. Okay? So, show me the money, show me the money, show me the money. Everybody wants to make money. How do I make money? How do I make money? Well, there's a lot of ways to make money with a podcast. You can have advertisers and sponsors on your show. I don't do it. I don't have advertisers and sponsors on my show, not because I don't get hit up every day, the people that want to advertise on my show. I don't want to be holding. I don't want to be beholden anybody with a sponsor, you know, an advertiser or a sponsor. Okay. Uh, and that's not to say that you will be. I just don't like it. I like, I'm, but I'm a maverick, man. I kind of march to the beat of my own drummer. That's, I'm psychologically unemployable. I don't take orders very well. So I think, um, whether the, I think I've made up this narrative in my mind, whether it's even true or not, that if somebody like was going to tell me, Hey, can you do this with your podcast? I'd probably just fire them as a sponsor anyway. Affiliate sales. Uh, this is assuming that people are downloading and listening to your show, which they are. As soon as you start, you can, you can uh, promote other people's products. If you don't have your own product to promote, you can do joint ventures. You can coach, speak, you get booked to speak. I've gotten booked. It's a crazy story, man. I got booked. I shared this. If you, if you follow me at all, or you heard me speak at all on stage, you've heard the story of the $25,000 keynote in Hawaii. And that came as a result of podcasting. I got paid a $25,000 keynote fee to go speak in Hawaii. And then when I was there, I sold 150 grand of coaching. And I had about $40 in my checking account. So I, sh and I, I know it's a stupid story. I know it does, you know, you're like, dude, is that real? It is real. I actually have done so, I've, I've trained, I've made a specific training about the $25,000 keynote and how I launched it. It was a 15 minute podcast I did in a parking lot, yelling into my laptop without a microphone. I was just using the built-in mic. This was 2008. I was using the built-in microphone of an old Sony laptop that I had, you know? So I know, I know these stories are crazy, but they happen to me all the time and they happen to my clients, for my clients like Luke and other people all the time. It's gonna happen for you too. If you, if you just trust me, like if you just get going and record a show, it's gonna happen for you, you know? But you gotta be inspired. If you're not inspired to do it, then it's not gonna happen. I think that goes without saying though, you know? Uh, by the way, we haven't lost one person yet on this webinar. So that tells me this is pretty good stuff, 45 minutes in. I'm gonna keep it at an hour though. We're coming down to the end. I don't wanna keep you more than an hour. I'll stay on as long as you want me to. I'll answer it. I mean, I'm here all day um, chilling out. So if you guys got to leave the top of the hour, go ahead. Just make sure if you haven't booked your call with me, go to launchwithsam.com because yeah, that's what I want to talk to you about, your message and your movement. But let's get going, okay? So that's what my site used to look like. And that was half the passion of why I launched every day is Saturday. You know, my daughter used to ask me, daddy is tomorrow Saturday. And I always had to say, no, I got a job. Every day's Monday, but someday, every day will be Saturday. Uh, you know. But the other half, I never realized until it happened. That's my dad. Uh, I met my dad in, two, this is from 2012. I was 44 years old. Uh, he left my mom to raise eight kids by herself. He left when I was three months old, okay? And so I went out to find him found them in a, you know, it's not like I walked into a coffee shop, but I got a hold of them and said, Hey dad, let's go grab coffee. This was in Annapolis, Maryland back then. And, uh, I hunted him down, found him, had a cup of coffee hey, just to say, Hey dude, I forgive you. You know, I don't, you know, if you're carrying this burden around that you left your uh, wife and all her kids, uh, I'm the youngest of eight kids. So I was like, Hey dude, it's all good. I forgive you. It felt better for me than it was for anything. It's like, you know, when you forgive people, I think you've heard the adage, I don't know what it is, but it goes something like, when you forgive somebody, it helps you a hell of a lot more than it helps them. And sometimes they don't even know that they did, it, that they did you wrong. I think this guy felt he did me wrong. That's my dad though, and I've never been able to find the guy until I, and then when I did, I forgave him, grabbed a cup of coffee, and that was good. And then he died a couple of years ago. But um, this photo, this is half the passion. The other half is the reason I wanted to be a dad to my daughter, Madeline, and now my other four daughters, or my other three daughters, four total, is because I know what it was like to grow up without a dad. That's it. I know what it's like to not have a dad. So that was the driving passion for me to want to be a dad. So I think people, when they talk about their passion, you know, they get way too off the, off the rails, man. They're like, you know, well, I want to do that, and I want to do that. And I'm like, how, how about all I ever wanted to be was a dad? That's simple. I can be one. I don't know if I'm a good one. I, I like to think so. I'm, I'm trying. I'm learning. You know, you ever want to, if you ever want to learn trial by fire, have four daughters on how to be a dad. That'll, that, that'll get you. That'll, iron, iron sharpens iron, baby. You tell you that right now. So keep it simple, guys. 
Find what that thing is that's burning inside of you and don't complicate it. Life is not meant to be complicated. It can get complicated, but we do a really good job of complicating ourselves. Find people that you want to be around, the people that you don't want to be around, cut them out of your life and start living your best life right now. Does that make sense? Okay. Common podcast, podcasting questions. How long should your podcast be? We talked about it, you know. Average person listens uh, 18 to 22 minutes. See you, Jen. Thank you. Take care. Uh, how often should I podcast? I would definitely do one as many times a week as you can. For me, it's every day. I would at least say three times a week. What kind of equipment do I need? You don't need to buy expensive equipment at all. I'm, I mean, look, you can buy a, a, a Yeti microphone that plugs into your computer that's 100 bucks. I'm using a Blue Snowball mic right now that costs $50, and it sounds pretty good. All right, don't use the built-in microphone on your computer. Don't do that. But buy anything that plugs into a USB. What if you run out of things to talk about? You never will. With places like Facebook and Twitter and, and all these different social media platforms, you just got to search for the topic that you want to talk about, see what other people are already asking, questions they're asking, things they're talking about, and you just plug into that conversation and make a podcast about it. How do I make money? We, we already talked about a few different ways to do it, you know, right here. Um, We'll talk a little bit about more of that in just a second. Do I have to be funny? No, no, you don't have to be. I think you gotta be interesting though. And if you're not interesting, the message has to be interesting. Like if you're gonna be talking about, you know, how to, uh, I don't know, I don't know, you know, how to install Windows, that, that can be interesting. So you gotta make it interesting. But in and of itself, if you were to say, well, you know what, you, you cut the space out and then you go and shop at Home Depot and you grab yourself a couple of windows and screen. That's not interesting. All right. You got to make it interesting. I mean, what I do is an interesting in and of itself. Hey, I'm an entrepreneur and I teach people how to go through massive transition, create incredible momentum and make a lot of money just sharing their message. That's what I do. I could say that by, Hey, you know, I'm a consultant. Hey, that'd be fun. Right. Nobody will listen to the show. English isn't my first language. Can I do my show? Yeah, whatever language you speak naturally, speak it. The people will find you. Remember, guys, it's a global platform, all right? It's a global platform. So getting back to the title of this whole podcast, how do I make $100,000 a year podcasting? Well, it's two grand a week or so. Break it down even more. Uh, nineteen twenty three a week. How do you make $1,923 a week? Well, the first thing you got to do is you got to start talking. Because if you don't start talking and you don't start putting content out here on this platform, then iTunes, you ain't ever going to be found. But it's so easy to do. If you take a look, under just under the business, I'm in a very competitive, my, my podcast is in a very competitive space in business. But... When you start speaking, I'm under the entrepreneurship category of business mainly. And there it is, you know, number 16 right now. Uh, so that's really good, man. Like I, I look at that and I got to pinch myself. Take a look at these categories, okay? Which ones would you be under? Here's the categories right here. News, comedy, sports, history, true crime, society, culture, arts, business, education, fiction, government, health and fitness, kids and family, leisure, music, religion and spirituality, science, technology, TV and film. So let's say you're under health and fitness, for example, you know? Which category under health and fitness would you fall into? Alternative health, fitness, nutrition, sexuality, mental health, medicine. So there's, there's subcategories within the main categories. And the reason I share all this with you, look at what other people are doing. You know, just type in up to the search as well and look like keto. That, speaking of fitness, there's a billion people doing keto now, right? So you take a look at keto. What are the podcasts on keto? Just take a look, you know? What are they talking about? What are the titles? The keto answers. Okay, Dr. Anthony, whatever, here we go. Um, CrossFit, the five pillars of hell. He does an interview show, it looks like. So this person interviews people, all right? And it looks like he's got a weekly interview of about an hour or so. All right, that's one way to do keto. If I was doing keto, I would research this. Um, two keto dudes, okay? What are they talking about, all right? And just start taking lipoproteins in the immune system. 
you know, the history of dietary guidelines, thriving after brain cancer. There's so many people already. Would you agree with this statement, success leaves clues? And if you agree with that statement, success leaves clues, why would you complicate what you want to do? You've got your own, you've got your own message, right? The keto girl, 135 pounds lost, eating disorder, recovery, all these different things, okay? There's so many different ways to go about your podcast. There's no wrong answers. Find out what other people are doing and having success and model that. And then put your own message. Have I said yet that you got to have a really good message? <laughs> That's the most important thing. But to make $1,923 a week, all you need is the downloads. And we've already proven that you're absolutely going to get the downloads. Are you going to get 6 million downloads, 6.5 million downloads? No, not right away. But you're going to get 60. And then you're going to get 600. And then you're going to get 6,000. Okay. Remember, Luke, he's closing in on 10,000 and he's barely done hardly any shows, 38 shows, and he's already sold five grand, maybe 7,500 so far. Guys, sometimes we look at, you know, we are so lucky to be alive in the digital information age. Like, we are so lucky that we can create a 10 minute audio, put it on iTunes, and make even $500, let alone 5,000. Sometimes you got to take a step back and say, oh my God, did I really just create a 10 minute audio and I landed a $2,000 client or a $5,000 client or a $10,000 client? Yeah. You know? So your so Cruz is, how would you make a hundred grand a year if you don't have a coaching package? My podcast is interviewing people. Well, you got to have a call to action, Cruz. If you're just interviewing people, then you're never going to make a dollar. So this webinar would not be for you. Okay. If your goal from a podcast is to get downloads so you can sell things because you now have an active audience is listening, then you got to have a call to action. You got to have that CTA, which we're going to get into right now. Okay. Here it is. A clear, concise, interesting message. That's how you make the first step. Okay. A super clear result that you provide for your listener. Okay. At least two CTAs per podcast episode. All right, your call to act. What's your call to action? All right, let's say if you are doing an interview series, what's your call to action? There's got to be a way, if you have an advertiser or sponsor to your show, or if you're driving affiliate sales, if these people you're interviewing, do they have products? And if they have products, did you set up before you did the interview? Did you set up an affiliate link that you could promote the product for them? You know? I mean, don't overthink this, man. This is real simple stuff, okay? And make sure you're making at least two call to actions every single podcast episode. This is my show I just recorded before today's training. All right, here it is. It's the Everyday Saturday podcast. If you've heard it, you've heard it a thousand times. Welcome to the Everyday Saturday podcast, the number one. And that's it. And then that's the intro. This is the actual podcast I recorded from my car. Life is too short to suffer. Welcome back, champion. It's Sam Crowley. It's Friday, August 16th, 2019. Uh, it's about 11 a.m. I'm actually getting ready for the webinar I'm doing. It's too late probably to get on it. All right. And then that's it. You know, that's it. So um, is it really possible to make money with advertising and sponsors, or is that all hype? You can make money doing anything you want, Junie, anything you want to do. So, yes, everything's possible. I'm also bootstrapping a business with no time to consult with clients. Well, I would, I, okay, so I don't agree with that. I don't agree you don't have time. I just, I, it's not a priority for you, that's all. Every, we all have time, okay? You think, get up at four in the morning, you know? And I, I know that sounds harsh, but that I, everybody's got time. So you do have it. I, I don't have, I've got four kids, all right? And I've got <laughs> two businesses that I run. If I have to get up at four in the morning, I'm getting up at four in the morning, and I'm gonna just get everything done so I can have a coaching or consulting call at noon, you know? So, you have time. I, I think that the advertising and sponsors is not hype at all. No. I mean, look, John Lee Dumas is probably making whatever he's making on his show, Entrepreneur on Fire, and Pat Flynn, maybe 20, 50, 80 grand a month from advertisers and sponsors. They have, but here's the thing though, they're getting millions and millions and millions of downloads every month. You know, I'm talking to the average everyday person, like the Luke Medeuses of the world who are averaging maybe 2,000 downloads in a month, which is so incredibly minimal compared to all of these big, big, big time podcasters. You know what I mean? 
So if somebody who's making, who's getting maybe 500 downloads a week, which is nothing, okay, 500 uh, a week, and they're getting, they're making 5,000 a month, that's the average person can relate to that. That's what I'm talking about. Um, an online calendar, that's what I use. I use OneSub, I use Calendly, or any online funnel, you know, anything. But I, if you guys listen to my show, you know I just go from, the podcast to launchwithsam.com. Podcast launchwithsam.com. Because I love talking to people on the phone, you know? And that so many people want to hide behind a keyboard because they're afraid. Because they, they're afraid they're going to be exposed, you know? They're afraid. And a lot of people, I don't have the time. You do have the time. So it's probably a fear of what if somebody does get on the phone with me, then what do I say to them? Well, that's a whole different, that's a whole different category. It's not difficult. It, imagine you're hanging out at Starbucks. And somebody asks you, you know, hey, so what do you got going on? Joe, what do you got going on? Cruz, Junior, what, what, what's going on? You know, what can you help me with? You would just have a natural conversation with them. You know, when you email somebody or they reach out to you on social media or they call, it's, not, it's no different. Don't make it complicated. You know, just because you're not a millionaire or, you know, you're not living on Malibu. I'm, I'm speaking to the everyday person. I hope I found the person on today's webinar. I am not speaking to the person who wants to be the guru or wants to be the next Oprah or Tim Ferriss or something like that, you're not going to be. There's only one of them. You need to be who you are. And until you're comfortable with who you are, you'll never be happy. Success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. And I'm talking to people who want to launch a podcast. And if you already got a podcast, then I'm talking to people who want to be authentic on that and drive massive amounts of revenue through it. That's it. But you got to be comfortable with who you are, man. Um, you don't need a website. Absolutely do not need a website. What platform do you host a podcast? Sharon says, really? No website. What platform do you use to host the podcast? Well, that's where I use Blueberry right there. Blueberry hosts your podcast for you. That's it. You don't need a website. Okay. All you need is a WordPress site. So, hey, Cruz, you got it, buddy. So, you know, look, WordPress, you need a WordPress site, but that's, you don't need that brochure site. You know what I'm talking about? If I didn't have everydaysaturday.com the way it is, I could not possibly care less about that site. I love it. It reinforces when people book me to speak or things like that. But look, guys, websites are an ego trip. It's for you to look at yourself and speaking with a microphone and look how great I am. That's all that is. I'm talking about the basic funnel, which is this right here, that this is when you drive people. If you don't want to send them to an online calendar, do not send them to your website. because if you send them to your website, they're going to go clickety, 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 click. Oh, wow, organic oatmeal. Let me buy some. I haven't had that in a while. And they end up on a completely different site because you got ads on your site or this link or that link. You know what I'm talking about? Send them to a landing page. But what I do is I just send them straight to my calendar. This is it. If this is for if you are a coach or a consultant, you need this setup right here. This is it. Get them on your calendar. That's all you got to do. Put a video up there, get a calendar, pick a time and get them on the phone. If you don't want to monetize your podcast that way, then get them to the landing page. That's it. Do not send them to your brochure site. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. You'll be aggravated. Nobody's ever going to opt in. You're not going to build a marketing list and that's it. So when I say you don't need a website, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to go either one step forward and say, don't build a website. You don't need it. You know, and if I wasn't making five grand a day with a podcast, I would tell you something differently, you know, but when I see all the great, and I'm telling you what, here's another thing. You will never have better clients than what you get from your podcast. Okay. You will never have better clients. Um, Mr. Saudi, try anchor to create and host podcasts. I wouldn't use anchor if you paid me a million dollars. Uh, here's the thing. If you don't own the podcast feed and somebody like Anchor or SoundCloud does and they go out of business, so does your podcast. So if you use Anchor, you're playing with fire. If you use SoundCloud, you're playing with fire because when they lose funding and they go out of business, so does your podcast, okay? You want to run everything through your own domain. So my podcast is everydayissaturday.com forward slash feed forward slash podcast. That's getting a little technical in the weeds. But you want to run your podcast through your own website because when you, SoundCloud almost went out of business 18 months ago, they needed funding at the 12th hour just to stay in business. 
And everybody on SoundCloud who had their podcast hosted strictly through there was crapping themselves because they thought they were going to lose their podcast. Yeah. Cruz, can we cover all this on our call? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cruz is wondering if you get on the calendar, when I, when I do call you, can we cover this? Absolutely. We can cover it. You'll find out when I call you, it's going to be a lot like this conversation right here. Very conversational. I'm going to help you out. My goal is to bring you on as a client so Samantha Kaplan can build out your entire social media platform and I can help you get your message clear and concise. But even if we don't end up working together, you're going to get off that call like everybody else and be like, damn, that was a lot of information. Yeah, it's free, of course. Yeah, it's a 30-minute power call. It, there's no charge for it. So let me just, let me do this. Let me get to this slide. Um, go to launchwithsam.com. What you're going to get... 100% clarity on your message, 100% clarity on the result that you provide. Your 100K a year system is going to be created for you. We create it. The entire team creates it for you. And I'm talking about, I'm not just talking about your podcast, which is where you and I are going to be spending time working on your message and how clear, because here's the thing. It's, let me just do another slide here. Launchwithsam.com while well, that's going on here. Okay. Um, all right. So let's do this. Let me get this here. Hold on a second. A. That's going to be. Whoops. A. There's A. That's the letter A. A. I think I'm working with my daughter, Susan. It's awesome. Working with her letters. <laughs> See here. All right. B. All right. This is what people always miss out on, man. They miss out on this stuff. It's like, come on now, right here. This is what you wanna do for people. That's all you need to do. You wanna make a hundred grand a year with a podcast? You gotta get people from point A to point B. They don't need you to solve their relationship problems. They don't need you to find them a new spouse or a mate or anything like that, unless that's what your podcast is about. All they want you to do, you need to identify where they are right now, and they will tell you where they are right now and where you are going to take them through your own intellectual property. Okay, That's all you need to do. But yet we want to complicate it. We want to get out into the weeds. We want to say, oh, wait, but I can do all of this. And I, guys, I'm only talking about podcasting on this webinar. I haven't even talked about how people contact me on Instagram and I sell coaching from Instagram or Facebook because that would just confuse everybody. My goal right now is if you're on this podcast, you don't have a clear message as to what the value is that you provide that you can articulate clearly. All right. And you don't know the result that you can bring somebody. That's where I come in. That's it. Messaging. Okay. Right there. Clarity on your message. Then clarity on the result. That's it. That's what I provide. What do you provide? What's point A? Where, where is your ideal customer, your ideal prospect? Where are they at right now? This represents being stuck. Point A represents being stuck right here. So let me just see here. Uh, right here. This guy right there, point A, that's where your client is right now, and they are stuck, okay? S-T-U-C-K. They're stuck, all right? Right here, point B, they just want to get unstuck. That's all they want to do. They want to get unstuck. So unstuck, that's it. Don't make it complicated. So what do you do? Okay, what is it that you do that you can help somebody get from point A to point B? That's all you got to do. And, but we make this thing so complicated and we got to, no, there's got to be more. There's got to be more. And that's why people don't end up enjoying what they do. I love what I do. People are like, hey, Sam, aren't you exchanging hours for dollars? I mean, that doesn't sound really good that, you know, you're, you're exchanging, you're coaching people and you're, you're, you're you know, you're, you're doing this so many hours. And you get, yeah, it's, I'm not talking about, a thousand dollars. I mean, when we bring somebody on, there's a lot more dollars than there are hours. And another pe thing people get confused on, you know, I want I want a twenty-seven dollar membership site or a forty-seven dollar membership site, not knowing that the average member only sticks around for three months, and not knowing that 
you know, it's a lot harder to sell a $25 ebook than it is to sell a $25,000 coaching program. You know, all of these things people miss out on because they're confusing it. All right. So don't complicate this stuff. This is one of the biggest mistakes that I made back in the day when I first got started. If, if going back to buying a website, which was a bad idea, and then going back to uh, trying to sell $25 ebooks, which was a terrible idea, just keeping it simple on what the message is. That's all. Just being clear on what the message was. If I could go back in time and just say, okay, the, what I really wanted to do, what I really should have done is get super clear on the messaging. That's it. Because once you're clear on the messaging and once you're clear on the result that you provide, then when you start podcasting, when you start podcasting, guys, this I'm telling you right now, man, think about this. This entire platform, just imagine this real quick, okay? There's 700,000 podcasts on this platform right here. Can you even wrap your mind around that? And yet only 18% of all of these 700,000 have a new episode in the last 90 days. Where else would you see that? Where else would you see that? It's amazing. Give me anybody that's still on the, pod, any, on the training, which is everybody so far. We have two people leave that I'm looking at right now. Give me a category or a topic that your podcast would be about. Just throw it out there to me. Let's have a little fun here on the fly. See if we can make some magic. Fantasy football. Oh, wow. Family and kids, leadership, grow your faith in bit. Fantasy football, that's intriguing. Let me see that one. I would, I have no, I've never searched fantasy football on iTunes before. I know there, there has to be one. Look. So you've got the Fantasy Feast NFL podcast. Boy, you could get all of those uh, betting sites, man. What am, I, what, what, what am I thinking about? You know the ones I'm talking about, setting up your fantasy team and all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, this is your, so these are all the big boys here, okay? You got CBS and all these people. Um, wow, this would be really cool, man. I'm just looking to see, you got some serious competition in here though. Look at all these people. I know, I know a lot of these names because they're big in the industry here, but this is really cool stuff. So a market exists, man, this is great. This is empowering to me because look at how many people want this content. Look at this. I mean, you have shows that are updated regularly and they're getting all of these different reviews. I mean, Oh man, this is, this is inspiring to me. This would show me that there's a market that exists and you can make a big, big splash in there, man. That's pretty cool actually. Uh, all right, Cruz, Cruz booked the call. I'll see you on it. You, I have set my call for a week from now. Okay, cool. Dungeons and Dragons, FanDuel. Yeah, FanDuel and DraftKings. Yep, 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 yep. That's who would sponsor. Collectibles, vehicles. Hey, Vite, by the way, you, you have a, a free call with me. You know that, right? Like from, I believe you were in Orlando last year when I spoke in that event, okay? Cooking and lifestyle. So, Vite, book your call. Cooking and lifestyle. Um, cooking. I mean, guys, this is great. Look at this stuff. I mean, have you taken time, those of you that are typing in here, faith and motivation, autism, that's amazing. I love that, Judy. Um, mindset, grow your faith in business. God, I love these topics. Look at this stuff, man. This is all Mike Wenzel with the wild hog problem. Love it. Uh, just look at cooking. I mean, these are super competitive categories, okay? But, okay, just start down the rabbit hole. Here's what I would do. If I, had, if I was looking to launch a podcast, I would type in one of the keywords, and I would start looking at what the competition looked like, what they were talking about. Look at what the album art. Just start cooking. Okay, that's for people who are just starting. You got keto in here, DIY food, all these different things. Come down here. Somebody's rocking these out. I mean, there's so many great podcast the meat eater that's the opposite of the vegan person right so you could have a podcast just about eating meat Twenty six thousand reviews that's crazy man oh man oh man guys do you not see the potential i love i just like doing this stuff um the kingdom mogul hey way to go jesse i love it man way to go um guys start go here's what i want you to do as part of your uh you know, 
after the, you can call it homework if you want to call it homework. Go into the iTunes search bar up here, all right? And type in keywords that you think people would find you for and start looking at what other people are doing and get ideas from that and inspiration from that so you can create your own show. And if you already have a podcast, think of different episode titles that you can create. And if you do have that platform where you want to interview people, for example, these would be great prospects to bring on your show for an interview. You know what I'm talking about? So who would, who would be the best person to interview for your podcast than a fellow podcaster that's in your niche, you know? So do that. Um, retirement needs. Yeah, retirement. Let's see Richard in there. Retirement. Retirement. I don't like the word retirement because it's got the word tired inside there, man. I just, I never want to retire. Never want to retire. Dave Ramsey, there he is. Um, podcast. So you got everybody up here, Dave Ramsey's of the world and all these other people. Um, so what's going on with these? What are people talking about? You know, start looking around here. Um, afford anything. Okay, build a better life. That's not really retirement, but somebody that's in that niche and that, in that genre. Remember, you can get yourself up here. This is just terrible. This is somebody that hasn't recorded a show since last July and they're talking about retirement and that Podomatic is their podcasting host that gave them the uh, obligatory album art with it. They didn't even bother putting their own album art together for it. So start thinking about it, guys. What are these people? This is 2016, okay? Person's talking about the difference between a Roth and a traditional IRA. So it's been three and a half years since they uploaded their podcast and they're still one of the major players in the retirement category. You know what I'm, so that whole thing about people not recording in the last three years or three months is true. You see what I mean? So start looking about how you can make your splash and typing in keywords in that podcasting section. So getting back to the whole title of this, making a hundred grand is making about two grand a week. Making two grand a week is getting this last thing in my thing right here, downloads. This guy right here, this is the most important thing. Once you start getting downloads of your show, right there, big, bold print, okay? Once you start getting downloads, that equals listeners, which equals money, because you are going to have this call to action. What's going to be your call to action in your podcast? What is it going to be? Getting on your calendar, go to your landing page. This, there's never been a better time to have a podcast on iTunes. And, I, and look, I've been saying that for 15 years. I've been preaching. If you know me, then you know I've been beating this podcasting drum for 15 years. Some people have taken my advice. Some people are like, well, you know, I don't see the instant result. I don't know, man. If you want to be a speaker, trainer, seminar leader, or you want to sell anything, anything to anybody, and you obviously do it with integrity, this is it. I mean, this whole calendar system that I teach people, if you, if you are a coach or want to be, if you're a consultant or you want to be, or a thought leader, and you want to sell your intellectual property, uh, book a call with me and I'll show you exactly, and I'll teach you that system how to do it. I'll at least give you the overview of it so you can go do it yourself, all right? If you haven't booked your call already, it goes without saying, if you've already scheduled your 30 minute call with me, don't schedule another 30 minute call because I've already given you the best advice I can give you, all right? It'd be us just having the same conversation again. But if you're brand new to this and you've never been on my calendar and you haven't booked a call before, go ahead. Go ahead, let's talk, all right? I wanna help you. Because I don't think that, you know, being on the mountaintop is no fun when you're there alone. Uh, this podcasting mountaintop's a pretty cool place to be. Monetizing your passion is a really great space to be in. And it's no fun being there alone. That's why I take so many people along with me for the ride. That's why I'm always telling people to get on my calendar because I wanna share the good news about this stuff. So get on my calendar so I can share the good news with you, all right? All right, guys, um, I wanna be respectful of your time. Great interaction, though. Um, great interaction. We're an hour and 20 minutes into the podcast. So let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. You guys were awesome. I hope you enjoyed the content today. Um, I tried to get as much as I could, but my God, we're already an hour and 20 minutes in. <laughs> so I thought I could fit all this in an hour, but um, it is uh, it's pretty wild, man. Hey, Chris, I'll be looking to, I, yeah, Chris, we got our coaching call next week, pal. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for being on. All the way from the UK. Uh, all right, Mr. Saudi and Vite and Ricardo and Todd, thank you, thank you. I appreciate Rich, Junie, thank you for being on. Jesse, always great to see you, pal. 
Serge, Sharon, yes, book your call. Oh, hey, Tammy, great to see you as well. Happy Friday. Um, all right, guys, you got it, Mike. Sam Crowley signing off and have the best day ever. All right, you know how to get a hold of me. All right, we'll see you guys.